Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Blair. If you are new here, I'm so glad you're here. This is a video I've been looking forward to making for the better part of a month and I finally have the chance now to sit down and film it and it just so happens that I am in my car and you can see like school buses are driving by and whatnot but this is a quiet place that I can film and so I'm going to take it. So today I want to talk about decluttering because one of my headlining goals for this year, 2023, was to declutter the entire house. Every drawer, every cabinet, every closet, under the beds, in the pantry, in the garage, all of our storage bins. That was a really overwhelming but really important goal for me for this year. And to this point, I have been jumping in like to the deep end. I would say I'm probably at least 50 to 60% through our whole house declutter and we are in mid to late January at this point and so I have been every single day um, working on this and then extra time on the weekends. <clears throat> to this point we have donated truckloads, probably two to three full truckloads worth of stuff and I have also sold quite a bit on Facebook Marketplace, which is a video I will create here in the next month or so and share more about like tips and tricks and how I got started on Facebook Marketplace because it is a great way to get rid of things you no longer want but that still have value and that you could get back some of that money so that when you're investing in whatever else you do actually need and use in your home, you can do it that way. Before I dive into my journey towards minimizing the amount of stuff and clutter that we have in our house, decluttering and all of that, I do want to share a little bit about sort of my journey to this point and kind of my personality as it relates to stuff and clutter and things like that. So as a little girl, I was always very, very organized. I was a neat nick. All of my little things in my room were in a row and I shared a bedroom with my sister for the bulk of my childhood and then in late middle school I think probably like heading into eighth grade I got my own bedroom and it was my little slice of heaven I painted it this beautiful I still really love the color this beautiful like sagey spa green and um, it was just like a very peaceful and relaxing little tiny space and so I kept it very clean. I mean, I I remember going to, you know, Target and buying organizational bins and little labels and even cleaning supplies and I would vacuum it and dust it every single weekend and I just really have always been a very like house proud person and at that time I was just like room proud. I was just very proud of my one little bedroom. Um and it was always extremely neat, always. And then I went off to college and it was more of the same. And then after college, I moved into an apartment of my very own. So that was the largest space that I ever had that was just all mine. Um, and that was about, I think it was about 800 square feet or something. So a decent sized apartment for one person, but it wasn't enormous by any stretch um, by American, Texas, American standards, right? So um I moved in there and again, it was always neat. It was, everything was always neat. Everything had a place and I would have always described myself as a very, very organized person. I love labels. I love bins. I love color coding. I, all of that very much like the oldest daughter type A stereotypical type of thing. So then when Riley and I got married, we moved into an apartment together and it was different from the apartment that I lived in alone, but it was the same square footage. It was about 800 square feet. The thing was that I came with my whole apartment worth of stuff because I had been living on my own for a few years when we got married and he had been doing the same. And so he came with a whole apartment worth of his stuff and we came together into one apartment with double the amount of stuff. So we had like double all of the kitchen stuff, double pots and pans. We had two mattresses. We had two bed frames. We had everything was double, right? <clears throat> so for the first we only lived in that apartment for eight or nine months before we purchased our home that we still currently live in and moved into it. So for those first like six months, I would say one of the biggest projects that I undertook was really going through and getting rid of all the duplicates. So we were back down to just having one of each thing that we needed and I got rid of the rest and that little apartment just brings so much warmth to my heart. It was such a simple time in our marriage and it was just learning to live together and be married and, um, it was decluttered for sure. 
fast forward um, to moving into our house, we brought a tiny little apartment worth into a, a house that was more than double the size. Still not an enormous house by, again, Texas American standards, but much bigger than the apartment. And what happened, we've been living in that house for, let's see, it'll be seven years in about a month um, or two months, March. Um, what happened was... <laughs> We brought all that apartment stuff in and it there were, it felt completely empty because we had like nothing in there. So we started just filling it up and filling it up and, you know, buying more furniture and more things. And we have finally we had space for like platters and serving ware and um, just all those kinds of things that really didn't fit into our little bitty apartment. And so we were able to, you know, fill it up. And when it was just us, it stayed clean. And then the kids came and the deluge of baby stuff and toys and play mats and high chairs and clothing, baby clothing just coming out of my ears. Um, just so much baby stuff, which you probably already guessed. You really don't need that much for babies, but a lot of it was gifts that were graciously given to us. And anyway, it was just so much stuff. Well, all of that happened. And then we had another child. And so that happened two times over. And so then at the end of last year, I was like I had like had it. I felt like it was impossible to keep our home clean. I felt like every day I was swimming upstream just trying to keep our home tidy and organized. And I didn't understand why it was so hard because as I mentioned, I consider myself a very organized person. And so it was really confusing to me. Why couldn't I get this together? I just could not stand it. And so I really started thinking about it and thinking about the times in life when it was easy to keep my space clean. And what I realized is in those spaces and those times, I really only had the essentials. I didn't have 18 different platters for all of the different holidays of the year. I didn't have so much stuff. I really had a more whittled down amount. And then I was able to keep things really neat and tidy. And so that kind of clicked for me. And I started thinking late last year that that was something I really wanted to tackle heading into the new year. And so there is the story. And that is what I have done. Like I said earlier, I've gotten rid of so much stuff. And it has been really interesting because on one hand, stuff is so emotional and it really can be hard to let go of certain things. But on the other hand, stuff is so emotional. And when you get rid of it and your home is clean and clear for the first time in several years and it feels like it can breathe again, I feel like I can breathe again. And I've done some research and learned the very distinct relationship between excess clutter and actually higher levels of the stress hormone cortisol. And I can, I relate to that. I can feel that. I remember days walking around my house. I remember one time, particularly shortly after my second child was born, saying to my mom, I feel like I can't breathe in this house because it just felt like every shelf, drawer, closet, bin was overflowing with stuff. And I just, I felt like I couldn't breathe because anywhere I went, there was just so much stuff. So I've gotten rid of a lot of it. And let me tell you what, I am sleeping better. I am a happier mom. I am a happier wife. I'm a happier woman. I feel like I can find things more easily. I feel it's been so good. It's been so, so good. There's a car pulling in next to me, but I honestly don't care. Like whatever. If you see, if you see me filming a decluttering video, youtube.com slash Blair Lamb. Check it out. <laughs> you might need it in your life. Okay. So I wanted to share, I wrote down, I've been taking notes over the past month. It's been about six weeks since I've really jumped into this head first. And, um, I have been taking notes about like what I've learned. And so I'm just going to share those with you. Let's see how many there are. It looks like there's nine. So this note is called decluttering journey. <clears throat> so the first thing that I want to say before I jump into this list is that my very best resource for learning how to declutter and how to think about decluttering has been a YouTube channel called The Minimal Mom. And the woman, Dawn, who runs that channel, and she has like 700,000 subscribers, so surely many of you love and follow her as well. 
she has dedicated her essentially career at this point because her YouTube channel has taken off so much to educating, especially moms, about the benefits of getting rid of what she calls inventory in the home, which is just excess stuff or just stuff in general. And so a lot of what you may hear me say is me parroting her, whether directly or inadvertently, just because I have been watching her videos day in and day out for about two months now. She has been my number one source, aside from just reading books, which I've been doing a lot of as well. Um, she has been like my number one source of entertainment. I have been really just binge watching her channel because it provides such good inspiration for me. So definitely check her out if you're doing your own decluttering journey. She has been so helpful for me. <clears throat> So the first little tidbit that I have learned and have really had to come head to head with was that I have had to let go of my past selves and my fantasy selves. So past selves, there are past versions of myself that have wanted or needed certain items that I no longer need today as Blair in 2023. <clears throat> Just this morning, I sold my entire lot of essential oils. And I, if you've been watching for a long time, you know, I loved essential oils for a long time. They were such a hobby of mine. I used them to make all kinds of home and beauty products. I loved to diffuse them. I made cleaners. I made laundry detergent. I made face wash. I made everything. I loved them. And in the past two years, I really haven't touched them hardly at all. And yet I have just had them sitting on my kitchen counter where I'm just looking at them. And so I sold them and the woman who I, I sold them at a huge discount, they're pretty pricey. Um, and the woman who purchased them was thrilled and I hope she gets so much joy out of them. But that was me having to confront my past self because past Blair loved and enjoyed essential oils for many years and present Blair does not and that's okay. So I had to let them go. Another example, moving into fantasy selves is in my fantasy version of myself, I work out at home all of the time. I do home yoga classes. I do home workout classes. I just work out at home all the time. I love it. And I just work out at home. In real life, I do not do that. In real life, I pay someone to kick my booty two days a week at the gym because otherwise I will not work out. And so thus I have gotten rid of all of my at-home workout gear, weights, balance boards, all that kind of stuff. I've gotten let go of all of it because as much as I wish I used it at home, I simply do not. So letting go, I've had to learn to let go of my fantasy selves, which there are many. There are other things too that I wish I was more, you know, doing or whatever and past selves. So that's been the first tidbit. <clears throat> the second thing is I've had to really realize and reflect that in any other time in my life when I have decluttered any part of my home, I have never regretted getting rid of anything. I can't think of a single item, a single piece of clothing, anything that I've ever gotten rid of and looked back to regret it. And so that helps me to trust myself as I'm making these decluttering decisions on what to get rid of that I've actually never done myself wrong in the past. And so past behavior determines future behavior. And I feel like it's fair to think that I am going to have my own back in that way, you know, and like, I'm not going to get rid of something that it's going to, I'm going to deeply regret. And so that has been really helpful for me to reflect on too. The third little tidbit that I have been thinking about a lot lately is that less inventory in the home simply means more time for everything else. And this is like directly out of the minimal mom Dawn's mouth. The more stuff I have in the home, the more I have to manage it. I have to make sure that it gets used, that it's not getting ruined, that it's not been outside for too long, that if it's in my cabinets, I don't forget about it, that it gets dusted, that it gets cleaned. There's so much to think about. But when I get rid of less stuff, I don't have as much to think about. And I really, really think that at this point, like before I started this decluttering journey, we were probably using about 20 to 25 percent of this stuff in our house. We're getting closer and inching closer. And what I want to do, of course, is get to where it's 100 percent. The stuff in our house is stuff that we use every day. And then everything else, I just let it go. Um, so anyway, that's definitely less inventory is is helpful. The fourth thing that I've been thinking about lately is that decluttering is making me picky. It's making me picky when I shop. It's making me picky about 
um, what is worth keeping and worth managing and what's not. And that's been a good thing. Um, that's been a really good thing. I have never been a real frivolous shopper where I just go out and just blow tons of money on like clothing or something like that. But I've become even less so to where if I'm going to place an Amazon order, I really think twice. Do I really need that? Is that really going to serve me long term? Do I want to manage that? Am I going to end up decluttering that at the end of this year? So the pickiness factor has been very helpful, um, extremely helpful, I would say, as I have moved through the past couple of months while I've been doing this. The fifth thing that I've been thinking about lately with regards to decluttering is that sometimes you can make back money on an item that didn't work out for you. And sometimes a sunk cost is just simply a sunk cost. And so I was able to make back some of the money on those essential oils. Not a lot of it, but a good chunk, you know, that makes it feel worthwhile. Um, I also sold, I had these like huge foam blocks in our playroom area and they were just always a mess. I couldn't stand them and the kids really didn't play with them because for, in order for them to be play withable. <laughs> they needed to be laid out. And when they're laid out, they were laid right through the middle of our living room and you couldn't walk through the living room. So they just didn't function in our space well. And so I was able to make back almost half of what I paid for those, you know, three or three years ago, I think. So there's sometimes when you can make back some money and then you can, you know, save it or invest it or buy a piece of furniture that suits your space better or whatever. But you really, I have really had to come to terms with, there's some things that are perfectly good that I spent money on that I thought I would use or that we would use or that our kids would use. And we, they, I, he simply doesn't, don't. And so they just, ha it has to go. Um, leaving it in the house is more inventory for me to manage and it's not any more likely that I'm actually going to use it. Um, so having to just kind of confront the fact that sometimes a sunk cost is a sunk cost and that, that is what makes you picky. That's at least what's made me picky is like looking at things and thinking, mm, I don't want to buy that for $40. If I know by the end of this year, I'm probably going to be donating it. And then that's $40 gone. And I used it how many times, you know, you just start really thinking about the kinds of items you really want to bring into your world. The sixth thing on my list here is that surrounding myself with content related to decluttering, family minimalism, and things like that has been super helpful for me in this journey. So like I said, the minimal mom has been my go-to, but there are several others as well. The seventh thing on my list is that I've had to learn to release the what-ifs and the just-in-case items because most things that I let go of could easily be replaced by just borrowing from a friend or a family member or I could run to the thrift store and grab one, or I could order one off Amazon, or I could pop over to Walmart or Target and grab it. And so sometimes it's the silliest stuff. Like I had a cheesecake spring pan. I love to cook and bake. I'm in the kitchen every single day. I have made one cheesecake in my life. I don't really make cheesecake. And so why am I keep, spring form pans are kind of large. My kitchen's not very big. It does not have a lot of storage. And I was like, oh, I hate to let go of it. I've only used it once. And that is so silly. I'm like, no, you've only used it once. Let go of it. If there comes a day where you just must make a cheesecake, surely one of my friends or family members here in town have a spring form pan. pan. And if not, I'll run over to Goodwill because they always have stuff like that in the bakeware section because people like me buy them and never use them and <laughs> donate them. The eighth thing that I've had to learn is to truly release what doesn't align with the stage of life that we are currently in today in January of 2023. So for example, I had five or six really high end, really nice winter jackets and coats and things like that from times when I've lived in cooler climates. And these are like Patagonia North Face. These are not really cheap items. And so I'm like, oh, I don't want to get rid of these because what if we go skiing with the kids in a couple of years? Or what if it gets really cold here and I need like these enormous winter coats or whatever? And I just had to get real. Like I live in Texas. It doesn't really ever get that cold here. It, you know, there are, there are exceptions, but overall, and we're not going skiing anytime soon. <laughs> We are not going ski. That's fantasy self behavior. We are not going skiing anytime soon. And so I sold them on Facebook Marketplace and I made back, you know, not, it's not, you don't, you can't get a lot, a lot of times, especially some of these coats are like a decade old, but even making back 20 bucks, that's 20 bucks that I have in my pocket and I have that thing out of my house that I'm never going to use. Um, so that works really well. The very last thing um, that I've really been thinking about and ruminating on lately is that I've had to really come to terms with what parts of my house and what items in my house are hardest for me to, to 
declutter? What are the things that are hardest for me to let go of? And then to plan around that. So some of the things I've left, like photographs and memories I've left, and I'm going to do those towards the end of my decluttering as I've built up my decluttering muscles, so to speak. Um, and then some things like baby items, that causes me a lot of grief and emotion. And so I need to do that when I'm in a really good headspace. That's not a thing to do at 10 p.m. after a really hard day at home with the kids where I'm exhausted and kind of edgy. Not a good time to weep into baby onesies. Um, so, you know, there's been times when I've asked Riley to sit with me as I'm going through something that's kind of more difficult to go through, even if it's something that's not emotional, like our kitchen drawers and saying like, okay, what of this do we really use? And for us to do it together and make those decisions, I have a hard time letting go of kitchen stuff because I truly love to cook and bake. And I always think, what if I get rid of this and then I just need it tomorrow? Again, fantasy self-behavior, that's not going to happen. So that's sort of an overall kind of my thoughts and like little nine little tidbits of things that I've really been thinking about a lot lately with regards to decluttering. I would like to do more videos about this topic and share more with you about this sort of journey and um, show you what our house looks like and how it feels so different. I, I truly tell you, I feel so comfortable and relaxed in our house in a way that I haven't felt in quite a few years. There have been moments of time where I've all the stuff has been shoved in the garage or whatever, and I, I it was like a artificial feeling, but there is a true feeling of relief that has come over me living in our house now that so much that we do not use has gone to better homes, to people who will actually use it and cherish it and enjoy it rather than it sitting and gathering dust and mocking me because I'm not lifting weights in the home and I'm not making cheesecakes in my spring form pan. It's just best to get it out of the house and make a little money here and there. So, um, I would like to share more. I, I feel like I have a lot to say about this because it's been really transformational the past couple of months of getting rid of so much and really paring down our belongings and um, having a new way of looking at this. And I know that it's a challenge because it's been a challenge for me. So I hope to create more content surrounding whole house decluttering. But I wanted to share this here um, and just kind of encourage you and give you a nudge if you are also interested in tackling your home to just start somewhere. Start with one drawer. That's what I did. For the first few weeks, I truly did one thing, like a 15-minute project every day, one drawer, one thing. And you build up, I built up momentum so quickly. And now it's like every day. The kids go down for a nap. I'm tackling. I mean, today I did like our pantry and then I was doing parts of our garage, which is like a beast. And I just like have built this momentum and I just can't wait to, you know, get rid of things and organize things and sell things and just make our home truly a haven once again. So I encourage you to just give it a shot. Try a little something. I'll be here to encourage you. I've also been sharing about this journey every single day on my subscribers on my Instagram stories for my subscribers. I'm saying this really weird. If you subscribe to me on Instagram, I'm sharing decluttering content every single day and starting conversations about decluttering and we're talking about it. And so if you're interested in that kind of community around decluttering, please come and hang out with us there. Um, I will leave a link to that below. I always have a leave I always have a link to that below. So all of that is what I have been thinking about lately as I've been doing our whole house declutter. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you a little bit of a nudge and some inspiration. Or if you're in the middle of doing a whole house declutter, I hope it is cheering you on. So come and follow along on Instagram if you'd like some more content around this topic. And I wish you all the very best on your own decluttering journey for your home. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.